Back in the workshop today and a customer has just sent us a Ridley. Now this is a customer from London. They brought this Ridley online hoping to do a home build, but when they opened it up, they discovered exactly the same things we did a little while ago. Paint over spray there, paint over spray there, not being faced here. And they got a bit exasperated by it all, got in contact and said, look, can I send it to you and do all the frame preparation so that I can home build? So we shipped it up. And what we haven't showed you is actually how you fix this. Now we have an opportunity of a frame they don't want to send back like we sent ours back to Ridley but they actually want to get it fixed so we've got this opportunity of showing you how we might go about fixing it so we have some cutting fluid lots of cutters and we're going to get to work now we're going to start with the seat post because the first thing we want to do is get this into the stand so we can work on the rest of it there's so much paint in here that we're going to need to ream this out so we get a good fit with our seat post so we are going to need a seat post Remo, this is for 27.2, and this is quite simple. It has a guide, and as you turn it, it just cuts. It only should be taking away that little bit of paint. Before we do that, I'm gonna do a quick sanity check and make sure it really is a 27.2 before we start cutting away. Now, I'm just going to clamp this very lightly with a cloth, so I've got some way of supporting the frame. The nice thing about these stands is that you can be very, very gentle. It's not got that clamping mechanism that you might see on sums, so you can really, really fine tune. So this is just a light clamp, just so that I've got something to work with. Yeah, as you can see, this isn't a great fit. We're just using the weight of the tool to bring it down. So you need to push, just using the weight of the tool to cut through. There we go. There we go, you can just see a small amount of material there, mostly all paint. Mostly this is achieved just taking off a little glob of paint here. So you can still see some paint, but it's taken off sort of the big paint overspray sections. So if we take our 27.2 seat post now, yeah, that's a good fit. Whereas before it was just getting stuck at the top. So our next job is gonna be this mess in here, which is probably the worst I've seen. And again, lots and lots of paint. Now what's weird with this setup is that we have a integrated headset on the bottom and a zero stack on the top. So the factory have actually pre-installed the, the headset on the top, but left this as a really nasty face. Love these work stands because you can height adjust them with the bike upside down as well. So for this, we're gonna need a few cutters. Make sure we get the right angle and depth for this. You can see this cutter's not sitting in properly. So this should be a part tool IS52. Because it's on the bottom, we don't need to necessarily face this. We still want to keep this paint on here. This top one should really be faced, but I'm not gonna remove that unless we need to. So when you remove these tools, you're just gonna remove very carefully in the direction that we're turning. These are the sort of the shavings that we're taking off. It really is a relatively small amount of material. And now if you look inside here, you can just see what we've removed. So it's this surface here that's the important one to be flat. Now, should we take a bearing, that should be a nice steady fit. So when you're pushing down it, you shouldn't feel any ridges. If you've got a bump, you'll be able to rock it backwards and forwards. But when it's like this, that is just a nice solid fit. So next up we have bottom bracket. Now this is paint over spray here and you can got some depth to it. I can feel it with my fingers. Also we've got all this paint here and in the threads. So this just needs to all be tidied up. This is actually really quite a rough surface. We're gonna start with the tapping tool. So we make sure that we've got a good threads to work with because the threads are gonna make up part of the guide that we're gonna use for facing. So, so I love that noise. So the important thing to remember is we want right hand threads on the left hand side and left hand threads on the right hand side and we go in this direction there we go there's our tight spot there so this non-drive side is actually pretty good but it's this one here that has all the paint so now we're confident that the threads are good we can use our facing tool and this is the reason why we needed to make sure these are okay because we're going to use this as our guide to make sure that everything's going to come out nice and flat now setting the tension with these is always a little bit of a fine art. You need to make sure you've got enough tension on that you're cutting, but not so much that the tool's gonna to get caught up. The reason they give these tools two handles is so that you can really maintain the sort of cutting angle when you're trying to avoid anything chattering. So that's not quite tight enough, so we can dial on a little bit more tension. And what I'm looking for is I can see some of the dark black paint being removed and just a little bit of aluminium being removed in places. 
all the time. I'm trying to keep this movement as smooth as possible. It looks like I'm putting on quite a lot of tension, but I'm not. I'm just really just trying to keep everything smooth. So this is quite normal. You'll see the swarf come from the bottom, but you're still not really touching the paint at the top. So it looks like a lot of material is coming off, but from the top here, these top teeth really aren't cutting anything at all. That's the whole point of facing is to bring the whole thing to a flat surface. There we go, I think we're about there now. As you're coming off, relieve the tension. So trying to avoid any like teeth marks as we withdraw the tool. So just keeping this nice and smooth. And at the same time, just relieving the tension a bit at a time. So on this side, it's quite a lot of material has come off nearly all from the bottom before we started seeing the paint being removed from the top. A lovely smooth edge now. And that's what we're after. Now, next up is gonna be our brake surfaces. Now these don't actually look too bad and I'm not expecting to remove very much, but we always like to check. You can, can still see a little bit of paint here. There shouldn't really be paint here because the serrated edge of this is going to very, very quickly eat into this. However, if I try and remove this paint now, it's gonna make a real mess. So sadly, what I think what's gonna happen is the customer is tightening this axle on, taking it off, tighten it on. This is almost gonna do the job for us. If it starts to creak, which it might do, we might need to re remove that, but it's gonna be a case of removing all of this paint around here. It's not gonna be an easy job. I'm thinking that this is gonna do most of the job. And what we might do is just clean it off uh, as we go. So I'm not going to touch that because I think I'll make it worse than it currently is. So we have these little sort of checkers here and these just get pushed in. And what we're looking for is a flat edge. And sometimes you can tell just by pushing on these, whether you're going to have a problem or not. Yeah, so you can see there's just a small gap. I've seen a lot worse though, but let's set this up properly. So what we're doing here is really trying to get everything perpendicular to the axle. So we're using those two guides along these flat edges, making sure that this is tight. And then we can set all this to be static and then we can move our cutter into line. These are always a bit of a fiddle. This doesn't take much. This is just taking off this tiniest little amount. There we go. You can always see these when they get better. They get a little bit easier to turn just like that. And you can see the little build up. Lovely flat surface and you can just see this build up here. So you really are cutting away a very small amount. With these, it's normally where the mask in tape has been. There's been a little bit of paint build up. So these weren't too bad. But what I'm doing here is just holding on to all of this as I remove the axle. There's quite a lump of stuff. It can all just come crashing out of your frame. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on the fork here. Uh, this is a sort of similar story. It doesn't look too bad. So we didn't get loads of time to film all of this project because the customer was really keen to get it back. But I did manage to take some really close up stills to show you guys the end result. So I just want to run through those quickly now. So this is the first picture we have. This is the, the dropout on the non-drive side, the bit that I didn't touch. You can just about make out there if we turn sort of the contrast up, the little teeth mark that have been dug in by the axle already. Now that's just going to get worse. Not really a good way to solve this without I think it will look pretty scrappy. That whole area really should have been masked off, to be honest. The next picture here, this is the top of the brake mounts after they've been faced. And as you can see, lovely, perfectly smooth surface there. That's exactly how they should look like coming out of the box. This picture is of the underneath of the rear brake mount. So we're looking at the bottom of the frame, looking up. And this is the part that was just covered in paint and it was like a convex surface. So we had to bring that back to a flat surface. So we used the mounting tool on the underside now, we couldn't really go that deep with this tool because we'd start taking paint away from the frame. It's not a great design for facing. It should really have been masked off in the first place. So you can still see there's some little black marks here, but we've taken that as flat as we can. So if you were to put those little silver washers against this, we still have a nice flat surface. So hopefully your brake mount will still fit super smooth. This is actually quite tricky to do because um, there's quite a lot of other stuff going on in the area and it's quite hard to get the tool into place. You have to be really, really careful. So this is a close up of the bottom bracket once it had been chased and faced. Now the threads to be fair were okay. The chasing tool went through that pretty easily, but the facing tool needed quite a lot of work to get rid of an awful lot of paint and actually took off quite a lot of metal as well. So that face definitely needed doing. Uh, and that's what it should look like when it's all done. Just beautifully smooth metal. Shouldn't be anything else in there. And this is the picture of the other side. Sorry, it's slightly out of focus. My macro photography skills aren't quite what they should be, but you can see here the face, the important, 
bit is really, really flat, so that when we have that bearing cup, we get that lovely flat interface. You can still see some little black paint in here. That's because there is a slope that goes down into the threads. That's really hard to remove. I could have sanded that out, but by the time we've already put the chasing tool and the facing tool in, there's really, really no need. That's not gonna cause us any problems. No part of the bottom bracket should really be touching that. It's all about that flat face. This picture here, we're now looking at the, the bottom of the head tube. And this is where there was loads and loads of paint here. And this is after the first pass with the tool that I just wanted to take the tool back out and double check. You can just see there's a couple of tool marks in there that we'll go back and sort out, but also that all the paint hadn't been removed, prompted me to just go back there and revisit that area. So by the time we'd gone in there for the second pass, this looks like this. You can see those tool marks have been removed. It's a lovely flat surface. There's still a little bit of paint in there that we just removed with a little bit of light sanding, but that's as deep as the tool goes. And you have to be really, really careful with this, even though I probably could have added a small shim just to get us down a little bit further with the tool, you then have the problem where you've got to make sure that the crown race has still got enough room so that this painted lip on the outside doesn't interfere with the fork and cause some friction or binding. So at this point here, I put everything back together again and just check that clearance and it was all okay. A lot of the time when you're doing this sort of work is sometimes knowing when to stop, you can easily get a bit too carried away. Now the top of the head tube is a bit more interesting. This is a zero stack. So this has actually been pressed in and I was going to remove this and just check, but it actually been glued in virtually. So I just, I just left that as it was. It's quite unusual to see them, one, fitted from factory and two, uh, pretty much glued in. Now this is a picture of the top of the seat post looking into it and you can see that we've only just scored the surface. That is literally just to get rid of the high points so that your seat post uh, has a nice easy way to move. And sometimes you think facing is going to bring you back to this lovely mirror finish. It doesn't necessarily always do that, especially with seat posts which have been split and expanded. This is literally just to remove any high points. Not so important with aluminium seat posts, but if you're gonna put a carbon seat post in there, you definitely want to avoid anything that's gonna put like a stress riser in there. This is a lovely, actually in focus picture of the front brake mount. That looks exactly how it should be. Beautifully smooth, beautifully flat. Didn't impact the paint whatsoever. That is oh, that's a sexy brake mount. And here is the bottom one as well, looking absolutely perfect. That should give you a really, really good braking experience. That should mean that your caliper is completely at 90 degrees to your brake disc and you shouldn't get any sort of rubbing or squealing with that unless you get things contaminated. And then the last thing we did was we just took a, a standard frame tap and took all the paint out of those axles because when you started to throw those axles through they were just getting stuck. Not really a safety issue, it shouldn't really cause you any problems but once they've been done properly, the whole experience of taking the axle out, putting it back in, is just nice. It doesn't require that much effort. It doesn't feel like you're scraping it. It's just, it's been cleaned out and the threads are working as they should. And that's how it should look out of the box. Let's hope that was a good little useful insight into the frame preparation that should go on before you actually build your bike. And this is the sort of work that used to go on in bike shops before carbon fiber came about and before brands were just mass producing things. And from what I'm hearing from you guys in the comments, not a lot of bike shops carry these tools or do this work. And it's a real shame because I think now more than ever, when we've got this age of mass production, I think it's actually very important to make sure that you get that beautiful, quiet, creek free experience from your bike that you're expecting. So. If you found that video useful, please let me know. Get down in the comments, um, add your own experiences. Does your bike shop offer the service? Have you had it done? Do you think you need it done? All that really good info. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. All right, until the next one, take it easy.